Composite materials are in demand throughout the world as they are versatile in how they can be applied across a wide range of markets and applications. There has been a recent surge in demand for composites, particularly as light weighting and alternative fuels are being explored. Key issues such as air quality and climate goals are driving legislation and funding. The automotive industry has been tasked with reducing emissions and banning combustion engines by 2030. Alternative fuel methods are being continually refined and brought to market, for example plug-in electric vehicles and fuel cell vehicles. The aerospace industry requires 41,000 aircraft to be produced by 2036. They too have legislative drivers and are required to reduce emissions and noise pollution. Oil and gas companies are investing heavily in green alternatives that demand composites infrastructure and storage. A need arose for a powerful, controllable heat source that could be safely used by the industry for materials that require higher energy such as thermoplastics and dry fibre. Lasers are quick to heat and cool and offer high temperatures. However, their large forms can cause issues with complex formats and they come with a high safety burden as they cannot be used without an interlocked enclosure. Infrared emitters, on the other hand, are inexpensive and small in volume. However, their relative ramp-up and cool-down rates are slow in comparison to laser. They are also unable to provide the precise control or hit the temperatures required for some composite materials. And from that, HUM3 was developed. HUM3 Discovery has built in a lot of the learnings that we have from our larger industrial systems, such as an integrated handheld HMI, um, integrated field bus uh, control. It also has some features into the process, so we've improved the, the way the energy is emitted and controlled in the head to make it more efficient. The system can be a little bit more powerful, and we've reduced some of the ultraviolet emissions because we find firstly they are the primary hazard that we have to manage with HUM3 and secondly they can have an impact on the process that's undesirable sometimes so we've reduced that further making it an improved more powerful more capable package. The trials we've been running with the HUM3 system are trialing the processing of thermoplastic materials so we've been trialing a number of materials and focusing on filament winding so robotic filament winding using the system to melt and consolidate the thermoplastics. We've tried a number of different materials and it's the, it's the early stages of research into the manufacture of components like pressure vessels going forward. There's a number of advantages that HUM3 will bring to the, in, the industrialization of composite materials. The controllability, the, um, the, the level of variability we can put into the heating of our materials is really important to us. From a health and safety perspective, it's a far safer system than, for example, other systems that we use like laser, where we have to protect the, the, the operator and the system quite extensively just to use the system. The HUM3 is a much safer, much more usable system for this process. HUM3 emits in a very broad range of frequencies, from UV all the way up to IR. And the materials we use all absorb at different rates. And so HUM3 gives us a very wide possibility of using a, a very large number of composite materials and successfully heating them. And we can select materials for their sustainability along with their engineering characteristics. So that, that, that range of processing window that we get with HUM3 gives us the opportunity to be as sustainable as we can within the processes that we're using. Hi, my name is Ross Kitson. I'm Sales Manager at Horaeus Nobelite. I'm going to talk to you about some of the materials we've been working with here at the AMRC in Sheffield. Uh, first material is a PA6 material, carbon fibre, We're running at around 300 millimetres a second. The second material is a glass fibre polypropylene, and again we've been running at 300 millimetres a second. And finally we have a peak material, been achieving process temperatures of 400 degrees and 150 millimetres a second layup speed. The good thing about what we've been doing here is that we have not achieved the limit of the HUM3 system at all, so we expect to achieve better process speeds in the future.